guys, this is Benny. And this is Drew. And today we have an awesome guest with us, Mr. Gabriel. Hello, everyone. And today we are going to also talk about my favorite, Vidya Jamal. We are going to Yay. check out some of his videos and we are going to see where the discussion takes us. If I was vegetarian, I think I would eat a lot of paneer. Really? No, that's nice. I like paneer. Paneer, right. Okay, let me show you his training ones. Uh, I think this is his training, right? Okay, let me sh give give you his uh, give you a little bit of idea of who he is, and then I'll show you the the actual video so that you have some just some background. Sounds good. martial art called Kalari Patu and mm -hmm. Indian martial arts are usually like the combination it's kind of like how yoga is right it's not just about the body it's about the brain as well it's about it's also kind of spiritual it's all of those things mind body soul, soul kind of a thing yeah let's see this one
Thank you. His T-shirt actually said, I train like Vidyut Jamal. Uh, <laughs> okay. thing, I think he makes the, I could be wrong, but uh, he makes these Instagram videos and of his workouts and his workouts are like unbelievable. And then mm -hmm. he wants other people to try them, you know, like, a, uh, you know, how you do a sit up, right? Like squats, but a one leg squat to the very bottom. <laughs> Uh, and he works out with gas cylinders and stuff like that. So he wants people to try them. And uh, if people are able to do that, then uh, they can wear a t-shirt like that, that I work out like Vidya Jamal. But after this, <laughs> I don't ah! know how many people <laughs> wear something like that. That's crazy. Right. But I, after this, I do want to learn Kalori Patu. <laughs> if I'm able to do all this, why not? <laughs> Well, if you That's do, I, I think I should say I'm going to be a volunteer for you to train with a sword and like try to <laughs> on top of me. <laughs> so you would be one of the person lying down. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what volunteer is. I mean, I, I knew of kids who can breathe with their eyes closed. Like, have you seen those videos? Like, there was a kid and the, and the kid like, passes his hand on the book and then the kid can I don't know like they they know what the content of the book is but I never saw this I think it's mm. a little bit more so so what do you think it is like obviously there are some skeptics who are like okay you know maybe he's going by smells by smells of things so this but then okay let's say he's going by smell then uh, I could understand like smells of either fruits or smells of people. So f I would understand a little bit of fr uh, fruit on the side, but fruit on top of someone's body, you know, how do you precision. like, and mm. precision that he didn't cut off that guy's finger or that he didn't stab that guy in the stomach, like that kind of stuff. Like, obviously it's something that cannot be really logically explained. Yeah, so I, I mean, you can have, you can locate something uh, to the extent of you can cut off and kill, but to be precise enough not to cut off, not to kill, that is something unimaginable. Yeah, and I, I wonder if it is like, um, you know, how in certain accounts, when people do psychedelics together, like two friends do psychedelics together and they don't speak to each other. One of the friends say, like, for example, two friends do mushrooms together. And one of the friends feels like I'm this little tiny person. They feel like an ant. And the other person uh, doesn't know what they feel like. And after the trip, both of them talk to each other. And one person says, I felt like, a, like an ant. And then the other person says, I saw you like an ant. So there's no verbal communication on or confirmation on that, but there is some kind of some some kind of communication that's that's something beyond verbal that they had for them to see the same thing, like a mental communication. Telepathy, something on those lines. Yeah, like I think that. that you raised like a very um, interesting point. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he's an expert on like those kind of arts, but the precision, like even with your eyes open, I think that will be like, like challenging. I think in particular, the guy with the, with the fingers exposed. Yeah. Because it was like, like, like centimeters away. And um, I don't know, it, 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 it's, it's interesting indeed. And also something that caught my head. I don't know why I put attention to that, but his pants were very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, because, <laughs> because when, when I when I was uh, taking like dancing classes, the teacher used to wear those kind of pants, and they look kind of funky, you know. Like, <laughs> I mean, I understand like those pants like provide men with a lot of freedom. But I mean, I've never, I've never worn something like that. And I was like, well, 
I don't know, like, it, it was different from like the image I have from other people who are into martial arts, like Bruce Lee, right? Mm -hmm. It was just different. For the, the first thing I got was like, hmm, that's something like someone who is into dancing will, will wear. Actually, uh, Indian martial arts, that is kind of, those pants are kind of dhoti-like, right? Like dhoti is this um, garment you tie around. Those are not real, like dhoti is not like a pant, but it's more like a skirt pant, you know, you men in, in the like a wraparound skirt. Yeah, for men. And it's because, I don't know why it's, maybe it's hot and humid and that's why that's the attire, I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, but I feel I like- know, Traditionally, traditionally they used to wear those things, but in the, I mean, there are ways of tying it up, but traditionally that is what is worn uh, by those warriors, especially when you're doing Kaleri Payatu, that's what you wear. Yeah. But you can wear, tie it up in different manners, that's the one. That's yeah. what the thing is. Right. So when was this technique or this type of fighting used? Like, is it coming from like, like a really, really long time ago? Let's yes. read it up. Let me, let me read it up. Let me give you proper facts, then guess. Kalari <laughs> Patu. And also the other thing I was considering, like when you were talk, talking about this communication, it's like, I was very, interested in like okay what's the other guy thinking like 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 is the guy laying down scared like like what is crossing his his mind right he's like well if, if this guy makes a mistake like this is it like i think I there must be go ahead i think they were very calm actually the the way they just walked off afterwards it's like you know like uh, when you're a biking partner the person who's on the who's driving the bike well, he's the one driving, so he's confident, but the person who's sitting behind, he has to have a, uh, you know, a level of faith in the person who's driving. That's the same kind of thing I have, I feel uh, is shown by the volunteer. You just have to have the faith. If you move, on, even if you move an inch, even if you flicker, you could get something cut off. So I think that's why they were so calm, because they were trained like that. Yeah, like they're, all, I don't think they're just random volunteers. They're all students of the same craft. So uh, I think they do believe in the craft. They're not people like you or I who, who haven't practiced it. So I think they know the technique and also they have trust in Vidyut as well. Uh, Kalari Pattu actually, by the way, uh, it is the oldest, it's believed to be the oldest surviving martial art uh, in India, it is also considered to be among the oldest martial arts still in existence, with its origin mm -hmm. in the martial arts timeline dating back to at least the third century BC. Oh. Yeah. It's been there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> No, but there are some theories where they say that, uh, you know, the Chinese martial arts and all these have also, you know, uh, stemmed from Kalari Pati. Being derived. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So there was some monk who went to China and then he taught uh, what later on became Kung Fu and Karate and all that. That's a theory. We don't know for sure, of course. Right. Hmm. But I do wonder like, you know, with meditations and with all these things, third eye meditations, I've never done a third eye meditation, but what does it enable you with? Does it like, are you able to see with your mind and, and with your, uh, you know, normal eyes closed? I mean, it's not like, that's an abnormal eye. My point is like, with your usual eyes closed, are you able to see with your mind and sense it? And and the fact that he was moving his um, sword like that, was he sensing the wind or, or how the wind went about or was he sensing something else? Like that was just very interesting. And also like when he, when he prayed, I saw that there was a the picture of Hanuman. 
there mm. and he was praying oh. to his masters. So I don't know what that symbolizes as well. Do you have well, any um, hmm? Yeah, actually it is said that this, I mean, uh, you have yugas in Hindu, in Hinduism you have cycles, you know, it, it, so this is the uh, Kalyu, that means, I don't know how to say this. This is the fourth yug out of, out of a total of four, this is the fourth one. And uh, the reigning deity is supposed to be Hanuman for the whole of the Kalyug. And that's why he's immortal for the time. For the, for the duration of the Kalyug, he is supposed to be immortal. So, and uh, he was a warrior. He was one of the greatest warriors uh, mentioned in Ramayana. So that is one of the things why he's considered to be a deity for warriors. Like that. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And yeah, about the pineal gland, about the third eye, it's like it's supposed to be that we have two eyes to see the world uh, outside and the third eye is the one that opens up your vision for inside yourself, you know, it opens up, uh, I mean, you can look at the world outside, but you don't know yourself clearly, I mean, we are searching for ourselves in this world, that's what generate is, what am I, who am I? And when you uh, activate your third eye, you are able to look at things from within. It's kind of difficult to explain, but that's how it goes. And then uh, your senses are able to, you know, uh, it's like you are more in connection with the world outside because now you're aware of what is within. It's all your senses become elevated to that level where you're able to just sense what is coming up. I want to activate my third eye. <laughs> oh, it's not that easy. And, and just activating it is not enough. You have to control uh, that. <laughs> if, you, if you ever watch this, we want to enroll in your school if you allow us to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I think it's yeah, the, the perception of other things. Because I don't really know how, how that works, if people can actually visualize something, if they can see like shades, or if they just become more aware of the noises, the smells, and the vibrations on, on what he's feeling, on, on, on what he's using, the, this word. Um, like, because like, it happens in nature, right? Like you have um, like the animals who are guided by sounds, animals that can follow actually the, the, um, the magnetic poles, and that's how they, they travel. So maybe with this kind of meditations, your, I don't know, maybe your your body kind of starts sensing other kind of things, and then you start moving based on on, on other factors. That also like the other thing, like I, I was listening to the uh, the instrument playing. I don't know what kind of drum that was. I don't know if that somehow is giving him some kind of guidance. I don't know if the beat is telling him like maybe move, move a little bit to the right, maybe, maybe move a little bit to the left. I, I don't know. Really. <laughs> that is cool. That's a good counter argument. That is go good skepticism. Mm. I'm sorry, my cat was like banging against my computer. <laughs> I had to like take it. <laughs> that is cool, yeah. Rather, rather than the smell argument, I think this is a more, uh, this is a better skeptic argument in that sense. That's a good skeptic argument. I don't know, maybe maybe I, I will need to, to sit down and listen to the entire thing one more time and see if like the beat changes or mm -hmm. if the volume changes as well. Well, the I beat, know. I did remember the beat did change when he was like just moving uh, his- uh, Yeah, once he got up from the prayer, after that the beat changed. But mm -hmm. I feel after that, it was the same mostly. I don't think there was much of a variation in it, but we'd have to look again then. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, uh, this is supposed to be a kind of, you know, a dancing martial art kind of thing. So you need a beat to follow. It gives you a rhythm. But well, still your argument is good. <laughs> yeah, because like drums have been there for for a lot of warriors from, from different classes. Like yesterday I was listening to some of the, the history in Mexico when uh, the, the Spanish went to, to Mexico and they conquered uh, the city. And the, um, the books say that, that while the, the Mexicas, like the, the original uh, 
people from Mexico were fighting again against the Spanish, they were playing the drums. They had people playing the drums and, and that was encouraging people to keep fighting. But when the emperor got captured by the Spanish, then the, the, um, the drums stopped. And that was the meaning that that was over, like the, like the Spanish had won the, the fight. So uh, yeah, like drums are like a very important piece of, of warriors. Even like these guys who are like on the on their boats, right? Like they follow the the rhythm of the boat, so everyone can like <clears throat> row at the same time. Right. Mm. That's a very good point. Communication by drums. Mm. <laughs> oh, I mean, I got thank you on that. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you want to watch uh, any of his other videos? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me find workout workout video. Let's see. Oh, okay. This, this is nice. This is a little less esoteric. Let's go with this. Be jungly. Break your own barriers. Coming soon. So that push-up was not a push-up. I think that was about precision, balance, and balancing <laughs> your center of, like, centering yourself so well that something as flimsy as a bottle doesn't break, right? Like, mm -hmm. center of gravity, distributing your weight enough so that that bottle doesn't bre break. That's awesome. Um, by the way... And I love how he's always smiling through these, like, smiling. <laughs> always smiling, always positive. He's actually a super nice guy. He's an animal activist, and he also run, runs uh, uh, self-defense classes for women uh, in India. Super, super interesting dude. Is he an actor? He is. Yeah. You want to see something of his? Uh, let's see. What's his name? Vidyut Jambal. Vid Vidyut Jambal. Mm. Let's uh, see a fight scene from one of his movies. Fight like, scene. Has has he been on uh, one of those romantic uh, films? His films are usually action, but there's always a romantic character. Like there is always something, something. <laughs> yeah. It's always romance. Indians love to have romance, so. But most yeah. of his movies are action. I've watched. I like how he came out of John Abraham's poster, and and in one of the scenes, they were using a pillow as a shield. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many things happening. It. It, it was went a the open window and we went through the window of a car. We just <laughs> went through it. Wow. <laughs> like I've seen uh, Jackie Chan do something like that, but he has never had his arms and legs 
sandwiched like that. He has only gone through uh, like smaller spaces, like a whole body, right? Like feet and then yeah. all of it. But this is the new version of it. Maybe I missed it. Maybe he has done something like this, but I don't remember. Neither do I. <laughs> and that other thing where he was ju jumping from one balcony to another like a leopard. <laughs> I don't know if it was a leopard or a dolphin or what, but <laughs> awesome. I think that I mean I'm not an expert of, of any of these topics, but I saw like a combination of so many different things. Like you had the type of action that you watch on the Hollywood mo movies, you had martial arts, like the way he jumped on that scene. Um, I think that's a parkour move. Mm. That's like a, they called what? urban monkeys or something like that they are like jumping all around like doing crazy things but the one that really got my attention is um like when he jumps on on, on the other guy and then he flips and the other guy falls down the, and it got my attention because in mexico we have something called lucha libre it's a show right it's like a um i think maybe twice or three times a week there is a place in mexico uh and the guys practice that. It's a show for the people. So you pay for your ticket. It's like if you if you go to watch a, a play. <laughs> but in this case, they, they are fighting, right? Like you, you have groups of people and they fight and they, they do those kind of things. But it's really colorful because awesome. the, yeah, the, 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 those are the traditional Mexican wrestlers with a mask and, and things like that. And it's very entertaining. And that reminded me that when I was a kid, I had a teddy bear. And I used to practice that kind of thing with it. <laughs> with the teddy bear. Well, at least you practice that on teddy bears. We, I mean, I did it on other kids. <laughs> <laughs> like the spear, you know, like the, you know, edge. I don't know if you know about WWE, but yeah. edge had a spear. Yeah. It was actually the shoulder. You use the shoulder on it. <laughs> Just me off. Let me shoulder you. <laughs> what was yeah, it? I didn't know about uh, with youth until my nephew told me about it. And it was like we were in a shopping mall and he, uh, he was, you know, his poster was up. Uh, like he's a model too. So for some clothing line, there was this poster on the wall and he said, do you know this? And I said, not really. He said, oh, you don't know this guy. He's, he's a real thing with the youngsters. You know, the youngsters really follow him. People, uh, I mean, the young guys, they are, uh, they love his exercise routines and his martial arts and everything. And that's how I came to know about him through my nephew. And then I watched a couple of his movies and I was like, wow, why doesn't he get more movies, man? <laughs> I mean, uh, actually, for him, like he 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 got he walked into an audition and they were like <laughs> hired, basically. But you know, one thing I've noticed about Vidyut is, you know how like movie stars, uh, there there's this news like J Lo or someone, right? They insure their butt or this and that for millions of dollars, right? And Vidyut is not movie, doesn't seem to be movie star like. Like mm -hmm. putting wax on your face, like your face is, is your money maker uh, apart from your other skills, but it's one of the major money makers and, and the kind of practices he does, he doesn't care about that. He, he's, uh, he's very, he seems to be very grounded and real to his values. Like he has his own YouTube channel. How many uh, film stars have their own YouTube channel? And he's uh, encouraging people to work out and he has his own philosophies and he's he's true to those values. And that's what I really appreciate about him that he's not movie star like at all. It seems like, of, of course, I don't know him. No one does. I mean, we don't. But uh, from his actions, right, whether it's a YouTube channel or Instagram account or uh, animal activism or anything like that, like he's just... He has these values. He knows what they are, and he's true to them, which is uh, which is something I really appreciate. And he's always smiling through things, always so positive. His interviews are all like kind and loving and chill, like Zen interviews. He's just awesome. He's just to me is like perfect perfection almost. <laughs>
<laughs> and that jawline, my goodness, that jaw, jaw uh -huh. I've never seen that kind of a jawline. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my jaw? It's gone. <laughs> I want to talk about mine then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a good morning, right? Like now we feel like we should go and work out. <laughs> him, mm -hmm. him working out with those tires and what was in front of them? Was there, were they all protein? Yeah. Okay. I protein. Thanks. And, and but, can you imagine he has that kind of a body with vegetarianism like he should share what he eats how much he eats like you most people don't think that they can get j that jacked with vegetarian food mm. so what does he do how is he so buff like yeah, he truly should share that. that that would be really inspiring for those who are vegetarians and don't want to let go of that but still want that kind of body and mm. yeah. <laughs> Please recruit us in your school. <laughs> <laughs> you you have a school? Yeah, he has a self defense academy for for women. Oh, wow! I wonder if he has like some online classes too. Maybe. I don't think I don't think these kind of things can be learned online. Just like you know, it's crazy. I came across some online classes for Kundalini yoga, and I'm like, and even recorded classes for Kundalini yoga. And Kundalini yoga is, from what I read, is the most dangerous form of yoga. So if someone is doing something wrong, like yeah. that, you get messed up. You can go into I don't know, psychosis or something. It's kind of like mm -hmm. how in France, Joey was learning French with a recorded session and the recorded session was be, would say something uh, and Joey would be like, blah, blah, blue, blue. And then the recording session would say, good job. He's like, thank you. And then, <laughs> and then Phoebe, Phoebe comes and talks to him and he's like, blah, blah, blue, blue. She's like, well, you're not really speaking French. And he's like, but he said, good job, you know? <laughs> So that's what I'm saying, like, like some things cannot be learned online, like you need a master for these kind of things. So I don't know, you know, at least for his practices, like Kalaripattu, I mean, you need to have the correct, correct type of form, breathing and all that, right? Like, I don't think you can learn all that. And what mistakes you are making, different people make different mistakes, right? There is not like a universal rule for that. So yeah, I mean, if you didn't need a teacher for things, then there would be, there wouldn't even be schools. Yeah. If just textbooks and online things were just enough, recorded videos were enough, then there would not even be schools for children. So yes, there is a lot of schools. You're cutting. Yeah, yeah a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was saying uh, that you need a teacher or a master who you can't just do things from the Yeah. See? Yeah, like someone supervising or giving you some guidance is always really useful. Uh, I remember I had a conversation with someone uh, a couple of years back because we were talking about meditation and, and how it's important that someone who knows uh, the concept is in charge of like guiding a group of people because nowadays there are so many options out there right like you can google any type of thing you want to learn it and you can just learn it online <clears throat> and this person was giving me the the, um, the analogy that okay when you are a kid there is something already embedded in, in your in your dna that 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 tells you like you need to walk and, and, and kids like start learning how to walk at, at a very young age because it's already embedded on their DNA. But I think the issue with meditation and, and that, that was the base, right? Like, like, okay, it's part of our DNA, how to meditate and, and how to calm down our, our mind. But I think from my point of view, what fails with that analogy is that a kid, when we, when we all, all learn how to walk, we are not biased, right? It's part of an instinct. 
it's part of like a more like an animal type of thing you know like 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 because we learn how to survive we learn how to 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 walk and we learn how to calm down our mind when we are like older and there is already like a lot of um judgment in our heads and i think that's exactly what prevents us from like meditating and, and, and getting that enlightenment state of mind and i think because of that because we already have so much knowledge that is preventing us from being at in balance that's why we need someone who has been practicing this as a guide and i think it's always very very important i mean it's useful that this information is out there and, and people can access that whenever they want but i think it's it's really really important to have someone who really knows what they are doing to guide us and, and during the process. So do you really believe in this concept of like in spirituality, meditation, whatever they talk about, it's like when you, when a student is ready, a guide shows up. Then I feel like I've never been ready. <laughs> like, when will I be ready? <laughs> I want to learn these kind of things. I, I do not mind putting in the hard work or whatever it takes, but it's like, how do you find authentic practices like this is my issue. Like whether it's, I'm interested in learning Kundalini yoga. I'm interested in learning Kalori Pattu, but where do you find authenticity? You know, that kind of stuff is, is my question. And, and I guess question for most people who, who would want to learn this. Yeah, something I've noticed is that in some cases, um, we learn how to be skeptical about everything, right? And, 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 and we can relate that to so many items, like all these conspiracy theories, right? Some, some theories are crazy, um, like the flat earth, for example, right? And, but for me, the, the reason of that happening is because we are already biased to the fact that every single group of people who are in the power, they are gonna lie to us so they can get more power. And that's how we are like, now I don't believe what you're telling me. There must be like a conspiracy theory behind. And I think the same happened with, with meditation. Like we are so skeptical of that that, that we ourselves, we put some, a, a lot of barriers there. And we are like, no, nah, I, I don't like this. There's something about it that, that doesn't resonate with me. But I think it's, it's also part of our work to be open and, and, and be like, okay, uh, maybe I need to give it a shot, right? And, and get rid of all my biases and, and try it. Because I think like that has happened to me. Like uh, I've seen uh, different techniques and I'm like, no, there is something that doesn't really resonates with me but then i explore a little a little bit deeper and i'm like ah, maybe i'm biased because of some other knowledge i already have mm. so i think it's just a matter of like doing Trying it. things and yeah that's what i feel like since there is no rule book for human existence it's just trial and error but then yeah. but then it's scary when you do very potent things uh you know with uh like powerful things like this mm -hmm. that that can affect your mind if your trainer is not authentic so skepticism is kind of due maybe you can try mini steps like do a cute little yoga thing like ah, you know that's <laughs> it <laughs> and then see how they they do with it and then yeah so for your statement when you say that uh, you know when a pupil is ready, the teacher would appear. I think for that, you know, you need a huge drive or a passion where you feel that, okay, I will go to the ends of the earth in order to find a way to learn something or to find the person who would teach me something. I don't think it's enough to just be interested in something. There's a difference between being interested and being driven for something. So that's when that level is achieved, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's difficult to achieve with, with being so monkey minded, you know, <laughs> there's so much going on. And then I know I would want to be in a physical practice that I enjoy, which incorporates mind, body and soul. But then I don't know which one it would be, right? Like, I don't know. And then there's like a thousand other things we are all thinking about my job, I am this pandemic, immigration, parents, oh friend got, you know, COVID, uh, you know, like, how do you, how do you like, 
one uni unilaterally feel one thing with all this you know it's just in modern day yeah. world i guess there wouldn't be ideal pupils then just a few just a few true <laughs> yeah and i think also that nowadays um what i've observed in the society is like we are just expecting things to happen we are like yeah i want everything but i'm not gonna put any effort on this that that's one of the reasons of why i don't believe in all these kind of things of manifestation and, and all these practices that are becoming like really common here and uh, it's so funny for me to to go on social media and see everyone posting like things and with hashtag gratitude hashtag blessed and um and i'm like okay that's great right but but we also need to put some effort there it's not like i'm just gonna sit down and like wait for something magical to happen like i also need to change my behavior i also need, need to 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 do something on my own and um I don't know, like, I think when we are actually, there's a big difference between the theory and the practice. And I think people are just sitting down, like, like listening to the practice and, and doing nothing about it. But when people start doing something, that's when, when, when things start like actually manifesting, but it's more because that, that, that way of changing our mind, but changing our mind is not enough. We also need to change our actions. And when we, when we do something about it, that's when, for example, then the, the teachers start showing. But I know that you're doing like a lot of things, right? Like you're not like you're sitting down and like, oh, I wish someone presents in front of me and teach me something. Like you're actually doing research and 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 and, and um, maybe it's just like a matter maybe of like that is yeah. what manifestation <laughs> is. It it starts with this spark. I do believe in manifestation, but I think that it is misunderstood that manifestation. I think people. Mm -hmm. It's misunderstood when someone thinks manifestation is just like, mm, I just want it. And then you get it. It doesn't happen that way. Right. But manifestation is to me, for example, my story of coming to the US, like I really, really always wanted to come to the US always that I was very clear on that for, since my childhood. And it took about 10, 10 ish years to, to have that happen. But I, it was always a lingering dream. It was always a thought I had. And then I don't even remember now how things fell into place. Like me and my parents, when we talk about it, and my sister also, you can ask her, like, we don't know who suggested or who even started this conversation of, okay, this is now my master's is done. Now I'm going to prepare to go to the US. We don't remember that conversation. I think that it was they started that conversation and they think I started that conversation. Mm -hmm. There is no memory in either of our minds of who started it. But the point is I wanted it so bad and I, it's just like I, I was in this flow of working towards it without any formality in it. You know, like who had that conversation? No one remembers. And I worked towards it and I made it here. And there's a bunch of other things that have happened in my life, but it starts with that desire. And when you have that crazy desire, it kind of, it is almost magical, but it's not like I was sitting there doing nothing. So it's a combination of things, obviously. But you gotta, the point is you gotta have a desire. And, and I think one of the biggest issues in right, times right now is, is basically like, what desire should I have? You know, after you reach, mm -hmm. reach a certain level in your life, like after you have reached, my sister talked about this, right? Benny talked about this uh, Maslow's hierarchy, right? Basic needs, mm -hmm. and whatever other needs, and then privilege. Like, yeah. what do I even desire now? Where is my drive? That is more of an issue. And that's when you do so many things, <laughs> like you're saying, you're doing a lot of things. I am. I'm <laughs> feeling and the Maslow pyramid was exactly what made me start getting more interested in what my family did in the past because I was like right now I'm a very comfortable level in my life right like I don't have to do the type of work they used to do and I was like I want to know what their experience was and, and, and I think it's very important for people to know where they are coming from because we tend to forget those kind of things 
we sit down in a very comfortable lifestyle and, and we don't really have the capacity to understand by ourselves what were the struggles that our families or our ancestors like experience to give us what we have right now because what we have right now is a product of so many effort that happened in the past and and that's when i started talking to my dad and 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 understanding what kind of um sacrifices that they have to make right for them maybe it's also hard to understand like what my point of view is right now but for me it's also hard to understand what their point of view was in the past right because we can only act based on the resources we have available right now and and uh, like my, my family came from a from a we like they, they were poor right like I, I have stories from my grandparents saying that they used to go to the, the dumpsters and, and and try to find food for for their brothers and um, my my other grand grandfather working in construction and, and making all these sacrifices, right? That I don't understand because I don't have to struggle with that. But for me to connect with that past of my family, I think it is, is, is very important to realize um, what I am right now. And based on that, like start also my my own journey on like, okay, what's, what's what I want, right? But like thinking about what we want, but where we're coming from is, is equally important from my point of view. Yeah, and, and they say, right, there is that saying, we are all sitting on the shoulders of giants. Basically, even like if you, not just your family, that's the story about whole human development, all the discoveries. We are sitting on other people's discoveries and we enhanced it and enhanced it. And only a few people have really moved the ball, but we are sitting on the shoulders of their, their hard work. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. I wonder what happened on the life of this movie stars that we are we were watching. Which movie? The movie stars that we were watching. I mean, what was the? Um, because I don't know. I I have also I have always had a feeling that people with who are talented in terms of any type of art, acting, dancing, painting, music, they have. Um, like a very strong emotional charge, you know, like they, they, they are very well connected with, um, with their feelings and they kind of, they are, they, they themselves are like an amplifier of their, their own emotions. And that's why they are able to transmit so, so many things with whatever um, activity they are doing, right? Either dancing, painting, creating music. And, uh, when, when my friend wanted to start a, a, a school for dancing and start including like other techniques, I, I, I was other techniques like in, in meditation. I was like, yeah, this is a great, a great idea because I think that people who are into art, they, they can truly get a lot of benefit from meditation because I think that the, the best expressions of art come from a very, um, active mind you know and an active mind can trigger like very strong emotions and that's what and i think that's why when we hear about people uh, like superstars on movies or music we hear that their their lifestyles are, are crazy right and, and and they go through like very difficult passages in their lives and i think that's because of that because um that create creativity comes from a uh, a very curious mind, very active. And I think from meditation, they can get a lot of benefit in terms of like how to, to manage that. On the other side, I know if by managing that, their talents to express their creativity with these unique characteristics is gonna be different. It's gonna be less, you know? You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, as long as, I mean, there are different types of medi meditations. And I would think if there is a meditation that helps you clean out the noise and just channel something just, just in one way, like, you know, there's just so many things like when you do psychedelics, you know, it's just like, so just one unilateral focus, that kind of meditation can really, really help, um, people with a lot of thoughts and ideas like just just one just put it down jot it down write it down you know that's the thing I 
I'm challenged with, I'm not saying I'm an artist or, or if I am, then I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> there might be some arts in me that I don't know about, you know, maybe I'm a diamond in the rough. I don't know. My point is like, there's just so many thoughts in my mind. That's why I feel like, you know, one of the lessons I learned is that I need to find this kind of a mind, body, soul kind of a practice. That was the biggest message I got um, through my experience with uh, meditation or anything else that I need to find a practice like that. And then all the other things will fall into place. Once you have a disciplined practice that incorporates mind, body, and soul, it really makes the, the entirety of your being so much better. That's why I really want to learn this kind of a art form. Um, so much noise. That's why I want to learn this kind of an art form because I think that just takes you to a super existence or a very optimal existence of, of your being. That's just what I think. Mm. Are you excited about getting the vaccine? It's, it's weird how vaccination is exciting to us. What times are we <laughs> living? <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna get a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when when it's gonna be available for for me. So I'm not putting like the expectations on that because well I, I think in terms of statistics like finally there was a drop down on the number of cases. Um, but that doesn't mean I mean I'm I'm sometimes I'm a little bit skeptical of the society because we see there is a chance for us to behave in a crazy way and we just go for it. Um, it's still important to like keep following the rules right now, even with the vaccine available. But I'm sure like a lot of people will go crazy and then no, that's going to decrease the impact of the vaccine. Exactly. I mean, even if you get vaccinated, you can still infect other people. And I feel like even without the vaccine, people are crazy. So imagine if they do get the vaccine, then they're just not going to care about anybody else. They're just going to be like, I'm just going to go out and party. Ooh. So you see that um, when the pupil is ready, the teacher should appear. That's how it goes. But I feel that, you know, for that kind of uh, thing to be achieved, uh, it's not enough to be simply interested in something. You need to be driven. You need to have a passion uh, where you feel that, yes, I would go to the ends of the earth to uh, achieve this, to learn this, to find a person who would teach me this. And that's when the teacher would appear. Just being interested, highly interested also is not good enough, is what I feel. Mm. And then we talked about it, so I'll use this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. So anything else for closing with uh, videos, videos or do we want to say anything else, anything we missed out, anything we want to talk about? For me, I was just saying like one of the messages from my meditations is that uh, I need to have a practice that incorporates mind, body and soul. And I'm pretty sure what he does, especially if it is called the third eye practice, then it incorporates everything. So I would be interested in learning like that because I feel like a practice like that, no wonder Vidyut is so happy and he, he's, so, he's blossoming all the time uh, or most of the time, uh, seems to be, obviously. Again, we don't know him. Uh, but I feel like if you have a practice that you incorporate like this, which in, which is a combination of mind, body, and soul, then all the other things in your life kind of fall in place because you have a certain discipline that you're working with. Uh, that's why people who are, you know, like sportsmen or sportswomen, they lead, they lead very good lives for the most part. I mean, obviously there are exceptions, but they lead very disciplined, good lives. And uh, even take... Akshay Kumar, who is another Indian actor, he learned uh, martial arts uh, very many years ago. And he, his comment is like, there hasn't been a single day uh, that I haven't seen the sun rise. 
in front yeah. of my eyes. He wake, he's known to go to bed at 9, 9 p.m. and he wakes up at 5 a.m. And the other actress joke like, that's when we go to bed is like at 5 a.m. <laughs> but um, he has stuck to that discipline. He is what, in his 40s now or close to 50? And, uh, his, and his life has been like, he has been very disciplined and it has brought a lot of value to him. So I would also imagine that Vidyut's life, uh, he's gonna age very gracefully and he's gonna, he's, people like these are, I feel like in a, another level of existence than people who don't follow uh, practices like this, you know, who just live life half as hardly. I think these practices really bring so much value to your life. Whatever practice you might choose, you know, um, it brings a lot of value to your existence as a human being. You know, we keep on trying to find a way to be happy. Uh, I think in the end, it is all about how you are able to balance things. You know, and uh, I feel people like with you, people like Akshay Kumar, they because of this discipline that they have, because of this, uh, you know, where they just don't break it, you know, like he's not, like Akshay Kumar says that he's never missed the day where he has not, um, uh, you know, seen the sun rise. That level of discipline brings balance in your life. And that's why these people seem to be quite happy. You know, they're flourishing, they're happy, they're healthy. I think the, the, the essence of happiness is bringing a balance to your life. Okay. So cool. yeah, there are so many things playing around. Like, um, it's gonna sound like very, I don't know. Well, uh, the mind, I, I agree, it's powerful. So a lot of things start with the way we think. Um, but like other things like the diet are very important. Our interactions with people, I think are also, also very, very important because we are social animals, you know? like. Like it, it's really hard for us to get away from from people because we live in a, a society. Uh, but the healthier our own mind, our own body is, the healthier our relationships with, with the outside world are gonna be. And then I think everything start like coming together. But yeah. I, I think that it starts from 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 an inner point of view. You know, like if we pay attention to what we are feeling what we are thinking what we are eating i think that's that's a very good starting point yeah and and it's easier than you think actually in a way right the point is you get one practice right you get one thing right and then things kind of like you get other things right too that's how it works because i i remember like for example i was taking this video making course and i was i had these simple few goals for my daily routine. Just like some push-ups, these many sit-ups, this many, three, three exercises, okay? And I would follow them before I go to bed without fail. And I saw that my discipline just was through the roof. Most students were not completing their assignments by the given time. And I would complete them three hours before the deadline. Always, I would just make it happen. And it just happened. It happened like magic. Like you just need something simple, but you, you need a discipline in life. And that is my point. Like it's simpler than you think. For example, if you work out at a gym or, or wherever you work out, that's going to trigger you to eat healthier. If you have not been eating healthier, you're not going to feel like eating bad food after you work out. So then, then it's going to be a... a a ripple effect of positivity yeah. if you find one practice is is what i think yeah i broke that rule a couple of times i would go to the gym work out and then i would go out and have some fries but <laughs> <laughs> i was i was thinking like okay i burned some calories now i need to to, to get them back and i will start eating like that kind of food but i that, think that's that that was because it was some calories. It was not a uh, you know something that you stroll uh, that you tried for long and then you achieve something very difficult to achieve. That was some calories, so you felt that okay, I can let go of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm saying like if you work out consistently, consistently yeah. for a while, 
then you your cravings change. My mind did. I wanted to eat more protein. My cravings complete. I wanted to eat uh, fresh vegetables. I didn't and cakes and stuff were like, Ugh, you know, I don't feel like it. Like it just was a very strange, interesting effect. So discipline. That's yeah, but, but I see that because like sometimes when you work when, in my particular case, sometimes I, I go like very intense with the, the workouts, right? And in the middle of the workout, I'm like, <laughs> like, I can't breathe. I can't do anything else. And then in that moment, I'm like, it doesn't make sense that I, I'm, I'm eating garbage, right? Right? Like, like I'm doing this because I want to be healthy. So when I start like eating all, all, all this, this trashy food, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting the necessary effort, you know, like all this workout, all this, this pain, all this lack of breath, like, like it's, it's pointless, right? Because like, I'm not, I'm not putting the, the correct um, food in, in, in my, in my body. And I, I can see that. And, but, and yeah, that, that, that thought comes usually like after I'm, I'm like working out every single day, I'm like, okay, well, I also need to combine this with, with a healthy diet. But if I'm not consistent, if I'm not disciplined on my workouts, yeah, I'm like, eh, I work out, worked out today. I think I deserve like some snacks. And I start <laughs> cheating. Yeah, that's funny. All right, guys. So if you liked our discussion, then please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And also uh, hit that bell icon so that, so that you're not noticed. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, guys, so if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up and hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time we post a new video. We post one every week. Um, and leave us a comment to let us know how we're doing or if there's anything else you would want us to react to. Uh, also, I'm linking uh, Gabriel's YouTube channel down in the description. It's pretty interesting, so check it out. Until next time, firmilenge. Firmilenge. The same. <laughs>